all of that is fine. So I think I'm just going to use this as a guide. This uh, table of contents here. Excuse me. So we've got uh, starting with our environment and going through some bits and bobs all the way to getting some test net Ethereum, some grilly ETH. So Remix part one looked at using the IDE to compile and deploy smart contracts. Um, let's see if this reloads. All right, so remix.ethereum.org, always check your URL, and now they have a scam notice on the web page as scammers continue to get more and more sophisticated. Let's see if I can make my workspace bigger. This one. There's the browser zoom. That looks a bit better. Okay, so last session we kind of introduced the IDE as a whole. And if we come here to the compiler tab, or if we come here to the deploy tab, uh, we can see all of our options up here. So the VM is the virtual machine. Uh, London and Berlin refer to the versions of Ethereum that Remix is going to connect to. So I think London is the most recent one, which was the fee update structure from about a year ago. Injected provider here on, on my browser at home in brackets, this says MetaMask. So this is what we're going to be using, using here. Hard Hat is a a framework for developing Web3 apps using Ethereum. Ganache is kind of the same thing, only maybe a little bit older. Uh, Wallet Connect is another wallet provider, external HTTP provider. So, you know, you can uh, DIY this, do your own. And then we have some L2s. So that's for layer two, both Optimism and Arbitrum are layer two. So uh, they, uh, build performance upon the base layer of Ethereum. And we'll be talking about layer twos in a few weeks in lecture. Um, so you can do everything in the virtual machine. This just runs, I'm running Chrome, this just runs in the background. And every time you load it up, you're given all of these test accounts uh, and you're quite rich. You have a hundred ether in all, your, in all your test accounts. Of course, you can't get any of this out of or off of the browser. Okay, so that is my environment. You can see here in my screenshot that MetaMask was provided in my other browser. Uh, it talks about the London fork there. Okay, so MetaMask is a Chrome extension. Um, it runs with most of the major browsers. Here's just a look at some crypto extensions that can run in, uh, you know, Chromium based browsers. Um, MetaMask is what we're going to be look at, looking at. In lecture in, or in tutorial, last week I was looking at Brave. Brave's standard wallet here, it's just called Crypto Wallets. So that's the one that you will see if you turn on your crypto wallet, if you use the Brave browser, which is a Chromium browser. Uh, Polkadot is uh, for the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, SensNet is for Centrality. Centrality is the local Web3 studio right here in Auckland. Uh, Phantom, I believe, is a wallet on Solana. Temple is a wallet on Tezos. So any type of blockchain is going to have, you know, this building a wallet is a basic functionality built into any new blockchain. So you're going to have wallet providers. Uh, so what does a wallet do? Uh, a wallet will store your private keys, sign messages, uh, and manage multiple accounts. Now, a basic wallet is just going to do that, store keys and uh, sign messages for you. But more functionality, I guess, is expected in wallets these days. And so MetaMask can do things like prepare transactions and post them 
to a blockchain. Uh, so I guess let's get MetaMask up and running. So install MetaMask for Chrome. Go to the web store, add extension to Chrome. You have to be signed in in a Google account. To do this, welcome to MetaMask. There's our Fox. So that all looks fine. Uh, so what do we have here? MetaMask will never collect keys, addresses, transactions, balances, or any personal information. So that's that sounds very good. Um, one thing that's come up with MetaMask security lately, or there's kind of this idea where you get a software license agreement and to run the software you have to scroll down and click OK right every time your uh, iPhone or your uh, iOS updates you have to look at the window scroll down and click OK that you agree uh, and part of the legal troubles here legal trouble here is that uh, you can't use the software without agreeing and so we say that it's not really optional to agree or disagree with the, the agreement uh, and so people are so used to clicking accept and agree and OK and next that when they get to something like a crypto wallet, they do the same and they just they see a transaction pop up uh, and they say, OK, I'm going to authorize that. Click, click, click. Um, one thing you have to do in crypto wallets is authorize your wallet to spend your funds and then you have to send a transaction to actually spend the funds. So there's kind of like a multiple there's, there's an extra step in there. And so scammers have taken advantage of this extra step. And so you have to be very careful about what you are agreeing to in a wallet scenario like MetaMask. And so this, this is also a UX problem um, where designers are, I guess, they're trying to do better to uh, protect customers. Okay, so what does this mean? We have a secret recovery phrase or we want to set one up. So if you have one, you can import one. Uh, I'm going to do a fresh one today. If you want, you can, I guess, import the one that I have in the tutorial and uh, steal my test ETH or take control of it, uh, or you start a new one. So let's create a new one. We're going to create a password. Hopefully it's strong enough, and hopefully I remember it in case I need it later. Okay, so there's a good video here uh, about MetaMask and some security bits and the secret recovery phrase. Highly recommend you watch it. Not worth my time right now to wait for it to play through the recording. Okay, so secret recovery phrase. This is the bit we're going to talk about for wallets. So uh, your wallet that you may have, or you know the the accessory that we know of as a wallet. That it's like built to hold a credit card and maybe some paper money. Uh, that wallet is only secure because you're holding on to it, right? It's it's on your person. The digital wallet needs to be secured in some other way, and the security is quite different from any other type of password security that we're used to. So the way that it starts is. Uh, you are issued a secret recovery phrase. Now, this is also called the seed phrase in other areas. So seed phrase or recovery phrase or even um, pass phrase. And it's usually 12 or 24 words. So you can see here, click here to reveal the secret phrase. So we're going to do that. Copy it. I'm going to open up my notepad. I'm going to paste it just so that I have it. OK, so there's your secret recovery phrase. Now, this is like the master password for everything that's going to happen in MetaMask in this series of accounts. So if you imported a phrase, uh, then you're going to import all the activity from that previous set of accounts. And if you remove MetaMask from Chrome um, or, you know, your uh, 
computer freezes or you reinstall or you forget it or it gets stolen. Uh, you can reinitialize everything using this recovery phrase. Um, but if you do it again and you get a new recovery phrase, right, that's a separate set of accounts altogether. And it says store it in a password manager, for example, one password. The absolute best way to secure your phrase is to write it on a piece of paper. Studies have shown that um, the best way to store data long term, long term being like a lifetime, 100 plus years, uh, is essentially pen and paper is the best way to store data. Um, you know, uh, memory based data, hard drives, cloud storage, all of this stuff can become corrupted, can be accidentally deleted, uh, can be damaged, can be, you know, susceptible to floods and fires. Of course, your paper can as well. Um, but really the the data regime that we live in, the data revolution, you know, it's less than a hundred years old, but we've been working with, uh, we've been preserving information on paper for a thousand years plus, uh, and some of that still exists today. Uh, anyways, something to think about long-term. Okay, so to get any further, you have to enter in your words in the order that you found them, kind of like a little test. So I'm just gonna read off my sheet here. Try to find these words in order. Okay, let's put the two, let's put the last two in the wrong order. I can't confirm. So I have to undo these two and then go boat owner. And now I can confirm. Okay, so hooray, make sure you save it in multiple places, uh, right? If, if you lose a backup, you can't call anyone to get your MetaMask back up and running. So having multiple methods to do this, one good way to do it is to take your recovery phrase and you split it in two. So here's my recovery phrase. You can do it right down the middle if you want, maybe down the middle is here. Split it into two groups, right? Give this group to your mom, right? Uh, and um, bury this one in the backyard. Uh, so that is a way to split up your key store and have, in this case, you need two of two pieces. You need both of these pieces to come together to recover your phrase. So that's one way that you can manage private keys. And I think we talk about, we'll talk about this coming up later as well. Um, Okay, so here's my MetaMask interface. Now in my extensions, I have, let's pin MetaMask up. So I have the same information in my MetaMask extension as I do on this page. Here, obviously I have no ETH, I have an account. I can copy that and then I can look at what the account is. So there it is, 0x5949 and so on. And we all, we've already talked about how these accounts are generated from random bits and how you get this, this string. We did that with Bitcoin. Okay, let's come back. So that gets MetaMask up and running. Um, So from our seed phrase, here we have a good diagram of what this looks like. So our seed phrase is those 12 and 24, 12 or 24 words. You can read about it here on BIP 39. So there's a list of words here. Uh, and there are word lists for other languages as well. If we look at the English list, okay, here it is. And we can go down to the end. The last word is zoo, we're in 2048. So that's the word list. So what does that mean? That means uh, the word list is just a way for humans to better manage their key 
store system. So if you give humans, uh, you know, a long string of hexadecimal digits, uh, it's not very easy to communicate. It's not very easy to write down. It's not very easy to remember. And it's highly prone to errors. If you're transcribing like a monk every character, right? You're eventually going to get some errors in your transcription. So the seed phrase system was developed for this reason. Uh, and if you want to generate your own seed phrase, that's great. What you need to do is you need a way to generate some random entropy or some random um, some random data, which will then map to one of those 2048 words. Do it again, get the next word, do it again, get the next word um, in, in the line for. And the more words that you can grab randomly, the better chance you have of that passphrase never ever being able to be compromised because it's too uh, it's too improbable that someone could guess what's happening. So the words are here. From the words, a master key is generated for your wallet. And then the way that MetaMask and a lot of wallets work is called hierarchical deterministic. So that is a mouthful. The hierarchy, as you can see here, means you've got seed phrase that's ultimate at the top, and you've got your uh, master key, and then you've got your child keys. And if you want, you can have more keys underneath that as well. So that's the hierarchical nature. The deterministic nature means that if you start with the same seed phrase, you're always going to generate the same child keys and they're going to come in the same order. OK, so. After you generate lots of different accounts in MetaMask, each account isn't. Individually secure in its own right, unless you keep the seed phrase secure the entire time. So if the seed phrase gets compromised, then all of these child accounts Okay, by accounts, I'm going to, I mean, addresses that get generated, all of them uh, can be regenerated in the same order uh, in a deterministic fas fashion, right? So the opposite of uh, deterministic is random, meaning you don't know which one is going to come next, but here, here we do. And so this system, this HD wallet system, uses the BIP39, so that's from uh, Bitcoin improvement proposal number 39. And so here's a little algorithm uh, to show how this works. And we've got some hashing in here, which we've already talked about as well. Number of words are uh, 12, 15, 18, 21, or 24. Um, MetaMask uses 12. Old MetaMask uses 24. So if you find somebody's phrase one day in a dumpster, uh, don't be put off if it's 24 words. You might still be able to steal their loot. OK, so a bit about security here. So you can you can read this. But essentially, if you have 12 words here, I do a little probability in order to convince you that your 12 word phrase is secure. I zoom in a bit here. So if we have 2048 words. The chance of guessing one word is one over 2048, but you don't have to guess one. You have to guess all 12 and you have to guess them all in order. So that is 12 of these fractions multiplied together. Uh, and of course, that's a very big number. Five times 10 to the power of 39. Uh, and you might not need to guess all of them because you'll get lucky and on average it might take half the time, right? If you program a computer to crack a code um, and you do it over and over again, you know, you're not always going to use the whole time. You're not always going to need the whole time to guess it. Uh, so maybe half of that, but it's still a magnitude of 10 to the power of 39. Uh, and then I just had a quick look on Wikipedia to see how big that is. So that's about how many IPv6 addresses are possible. Um, and then there's a few other math bits close to that. Um, many orders of magnitude bigger, but I guess not too far away, is the number of atoms in Earth, uh, 10 to the 50. Uh, so it's it's very it's a very big number. So you could do an analysis based on how fast your computer is, write a script. Um, and see how long it's going to take 
uh, here computer to guess Satoshi's key. Uh, Satoshi doesn't have a, a seed phrase, right? This is only for Ethereum. Uh, maybe you want to guess a uh, Vitalik's seed phrase, something like that. Okay, let's get our test networks up and running in MetaMask. So click on my extension. I get a list of networks here. I guess I could do it on the web page too. So here are the networks. Ethereum mainnet, that's my only choice. Uh, if you use Brave, you're automatically going to see other networks. You're going to see, I think, uh, Avalanche and maybe Polkadot as well in there, or maybe a Cosmos. Uh, anyways, um, uh, whereas MetaMask is uh, stock standard default here just for Ethereum. So what we're just going to do is click Show Hide. And then we're going to find the setting and turn it on. And then we're going to click back. OK, so I click show hide in the settings and now we see all the test nets. So the only test net we're interested in here is going to be Gurley. And Gurley was the last testnet to be activated to proof of stake just a month ago in early August. And Gurley is the one that's going to be maintained moving forward for proof of stake Ethereum, uh, Ethereum 2.0, or no longer called 2.0. It's the consensus layer and execution layer. And that's going to be uh, taking place in less than one week. Uh, so by the time we are back in session, uh, ETH should be fully proof of stake. Um, so we'll, we'll be using the Gurley network here. Uh, you can add your own network as well, so you can connect MetaMask into other types of networks. Uh, if we click this, uh, you need an RPC URL. Uh, chain ID is usually just hard-coded by the network creator uh, and whatever they want to call the network network name. Uh, and a note here, be careful the networks that you trust. Okay, so that gets us connected to Gurley. And now let's go to Remix and go to Injected Provider. No Injected Provider found. You may have to reload the page. So I can see my MetaMask up here has access to the site. That's quite handy, by the way. This is a uh, best practice security tip right here. This will go green when I'm connected to the site uh, and obviously not be green when I'm not connected. Um, I think I mentioned in the tutorial, best practice is to turn off your extension when you're done doing whatever you need to do. Um, just in case in the future there's an update that has a vulnerability uh, and could leave your MetaMask compromised. Um, if your MetaMask is offline, then you know then uh, nothing can happen. Nothing can get posted, right? For anyone, uh, for anyone to transmit any of your coins or assets, uh, you need to be able to post it to a blockchain. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean they can't compromise. Your key can't be compromised. If anyone gets access to that seed phrase, then your key is compromised. And it's kind of, it's one of those things that you don't know that your wallet has been hacked or stolen until you go look. You know, you don't get a notification saying that, uh, oh, your seed phrase has been compromised. Okay, so let's refresh page. And I'm going to go back to the deploy tab. And now, OK, so now it recognizes I've got MetaMask. So it's telling me that that is what I'm after. And here I get a notification. You can make these windows bigger. They come out really small. Um, this is another nice little thing. It says, what account do you want to use? So you're not going to have to uh, expose all of your accounts to every website that you connect to. 
if you have one account to use for OpenSea, you can only you can click just that one to expose to that web site or that injected web three. So I only have one account here, so I'm going to click next and connect. And I see right here it says Curly Five Network. So that looks excellent. My address here, right before I had 100 Ether, now I have zero Ether, uh, 0x5949. Zero so that looks like my address. That I'm expecting 0x5949. Zero and now it says connected. I've got the green icon. Okay, but I've got zero ether. And so because I'm on testnet, I need to use real ETH, not real, I need to use testnet ETH, real testnet ETH, uh, gets tricky keeping them distinct. I need to use real testnet ether in order to post transactions uh, or in order to deploy any contracts. Um, and so I don't, I don't have any, right? And so um, if, you were a developer that was doing this, you know, you would have a bunch of accounts with testnet ETH in them. Uh, for us, we can just go grab a little bit. We won't need very much. So how do you get testnet ETH? You cannot buy it, okay? Uh, it's very important that your testnet coins do not have value. That would really mess things up if you had, uh, same with Bitcoin, right? If you had testnet Bitcoin that had value and testnet ether, that had value. Um, and so people run these faucets, which will just like a tap that's left running, which will drip out some curly ETH. So we can go here. Uh, curly faucet, fast and reliable, you get a quarter a day. Now this one, you have to sign up. So if you're interested in blockchain development, it might be a good idea to sign up to Alchemy. They're kind of like a uh, app uh, they're kind of like an, a platform dedicated to building Web3 apps, okay? Um, and so they also do a lot with Layer 2 Ethereum. Um, so, and last I checked, they were smashing it. Anyway, so you can see here, they're not going to let you get your testnet ETH for free. You do have to sign up for an account. So let's close that and try this one. Here we have a beautifully designed website. Okay, so proof of work faucet, please enter your address. So you can just go to MetaMask. When you click it, it copies. Paste, I'm gonna do a CAPTCHA. Uh, I haven't seen this one before. A teacup with similar porcelain design patterns. So these all look similar. Bam. Okay. And then we're going to start mining. Uh, and we can see here the faucet is in good shape. My maximum claim is in three hours, I can mine eight GO for girly ETH. Okay. What is a proof of work faucet? How does it help? Uh, and so on and so on. It's a dot DE. Uh, it's coming out of Germany, and girly is a German. There's a link to the testnet page. Girly is a German. Thing. I don't don't know what it means. Maybe it's a name. Okay, so claiming ETH will actually be verified on chain as opposed to the virtual machine in the browser. So I think this is a very good exercise to do because you're interacting with a real blockchain as opposed to a simulated one. Okay, so my account has 0.1 girly ETH in it there, but of course I'm doing all this from scratch. So I'm looking at this. My minimum claim is 0.05. So I have to wait a little bit more, a little bit longer until I get my minimum claim. Yeah, so the wordless system is kind of interesting. If you make your way to, let's go back to one of my footnotes here. If you make your way to 
FIP 32. Let's see what this one is. You will see the details for how this works. And uh, so it was authored here by Peter Walla. And Peter is a infamous, uh, basically Bitcoin developer, all around good dude. He's, you know, super smart, super shadowy coder. Um, so Peter Wallet, really interesting dude. So he wrote all this, and so you can go through the specs here of how these things are derivated, and we can see some bits that we've covered in class. Uh, so HMAC and a SHA-512, uh, where we have some key derivation. We're going to append all this data uh, into it. And this is how you would build the algorithm to generate the hierarchical keys in that deterministic fashion, such that the next time you do it, you get the same result. Um, now, maybe one thing I'll mention here. Um, and then they've got some well-known test vectors, right? So this is handy if you want to build your own wallet. Um, as a much more advanced exercise, you can do some testing with the information provided here. So back in MetaMask, while I let my test ETH mine in the background, um, you may want to create a new account, right? So I might want to use this account one for testing um, for my class project. Um, but I might want to use another account on OpenSea to buy some NFTs. And so we can create an account. OpenSea NFT account. Uh, and I've got a new address. So if I copy this one and paste it side by side with my old one, right, we should not be able to see any dis any clear pattern between the two. Completely random new address. So you can post this address and receive, uh, use it in any way you want. Um, one of the reasons why people would use uh, HD wallet is say you're a merchant and you need to receive payment every time you sell something, but you don't want everybody to see all of your transaction activity. So best practice is to generate a brand new address every time you receive payment, and you can use an HD wallet to do that, right? Uh, the number of new addresses you can generate is very large, so you can just keep pumping out new addresses for every single new customer, every new transaction. Uh, now, on the back end, you have to know that they are all linked together and they can all be lost or compromised by your, um, in this case, by your seed phrase. Okay, so I've got two accounts and we can see them here, account one and account two. Um, by the way, when you make an account, you have to choose which network to connect it to. So you don't only have a testnet account, you have one account which is valid or can be seen and used across many different networks. Um, especially for Ethereum addresses, many other blockchains can recognize Ethereum addresses, um, not just your test net or not just your main net. Okay, we have 0.15 and my minimum is 0.05. So I'm going to stop and claim. Short haircuts, okay. So I think the, the faucet has to prepare a transaction and post it. And there we go. We even have a TX ID. And if I go into my MetaMask, I see zero here, but that's because I'm on my OpenSea. If I go to account one, oh, did it just pop up there? Yeah, so here we can see 0.1599 in account one. Account two is still has. Zero. Okay, so we've got some test 
properly if Okay, so let's use some of our test net ETH. So let's just, what are we going to do here? Uh, we're going to deploy this contract, this default contract that comes with Remix. So back in Remix, Remix is updated, right? 0.1599 ETH now. So if I go to contracts, we have these default ones. So if I look at the owner contract and i can already see a green check here so auto compile is ticked and so owner has been compiled so this is standard compiling if you have an error in here okay the compiler is going to tell you hey that's not the right format i'm looking for and send you back on your way so that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Um, if you have a script here, you can do this at the same time. So open owner, uh, compile it in the deploy and run transactions tab, click deploy. So that is this tab. So I'm still on my 0 0.1599. I have a contract window here and I've only compiled one contract so it shows up here owner.soul and then I'm going to click deploy and now MetaMask is going to open up because there's no free lunches so let's make the window bigger so you have to pay gas fees move that out the way so you have to pay gas fees right to deploy your contract now we just saw it refresh so gas fees are a dynamic thing. So in times when the network is busy, you're going to pay more. Uh, and so it's trying to give us here an accurate update of how much uh, the gas is going to cost. And there's some other information there about gas. OK, so let's confirm. We can see an update down in my terminal window. There we go. So it's in a blocks. It's, it's in a block. Um, the from and the to value is very important. If I go back to MetaMask, I can see some activity here. So here's my assets. 1599 before, now I have 1592. Uh, you might not be able to see that behind my head. I can go to activity. Okay. Here. I can go to activity and I can see contract deployment. So you can click on that and then you can view on the block explorer. So I highly recommend you explore all of these things. So this is on Etherscan. And right in red here, it's a testnet transaction only. So 0x5949, that's my address. And uh, it says two, but it's not really going to anyone, right? Because the contract didn't exist yet. So if you're sending around coins, uh, you're just going to have a from field and a to field. So from me to you um, and a value. And then that transaction gets posted. Um, for a contract here, it's a little bit different. We have a from field, but we're not sending it to anyone. So that's where the wallet infrastructure um comes in in terms of deploying the contract and so we can click on this and now my contract we can see it right here one minute ago my contract now has an address right up here okay and if you were to do this again you would get a new address so when you're building an app you need to deploy your contracts to the blockchain and then to have people interact with those contracts, you need to get that contract address or that ID and build it into your front end or, you know, send it out on Discord uh, to alert people of the address that's there. Um, all righty, let's click on this 
lock. Just to see how this goes. OK, so proposed on. So I said earlier that Gurley is a proof of stake Ethereum testnet, and we can tell that because we can see here that we have epics. So uh, ETH2 as a proof of stake blockchain, instead of blocks coming every 12 seconds and just piling on top of each other in a probabilistic manner, um, what ETH2 is doing is it's bundling the blocks, which are now called slots. Okay, blocks are now called slots. It bundles them into an epic of 32 blocks, and then the epic gets published every six minutes together. Okay, so the block time is the same, and all those slots just go into an epic. And after two epics, they get finalized. Uh, so that's a, a you know big operational procedural difference from before when it was proof of work. All right, so that looks pretty good. And we can see these details also in Remix. We can see all the same details we just read about on Etherscan in terms of logs. And, uh, uh, and so all the info that you need to do your debugging development is here. A uh, very important bit here, how much gas uh, did it cost, inputs, if there are any, and outputs, if there are any. Okay, so let's use some ETH, and I said that our balance went down. Uh, you have to wait for these transactions to be confirmed. Okay, so we're coming up to the top of the hour. So next I have here, prepare a transaction to send some ETH. Uh, so we have a, some contract code here um, borrowed from this website, Solidity by example. Uh, and so the exercise, which I'm not going to go through, but there are a few steps here. So the exercise will be to use this contract. So there's two contracts here. One is to receive Ether and the other is to send Ether. Uh, and there's a little bit of information here about uh, accepted methods to receive Ether as well and send Ether. Um, and so the exercise will be to compile the contract, use your two accounts, use your, where are they? Your two accounts here that you've got in MetaMask to transfer some ETH from one account to the next. Uh, and so on this, let's see, that's a bit big. On this screen here, this will show you the MetaMask steps to prepare that transaction. Uh, in order to do that. But like I said, we're at the top of the hour, so I am going to wrap up soon. Um, when you're finished, check if it works. So let's look at some things that we want to be able to do after today's session. Uh, so this is after that step I just described here with compiling the two new contracts, has a balance of zero, so send some ether to that contract. Uh, why would you want to send ETH to a contract and not to someone's wallet? Um, and then try to think about how that fits into the app that you're building. How to look at your gas fees and you can compare them to the ones that we just saw. And I think I answered this about why gas fees are different. It's a, it's a dy dynamic auction based system. Um, but definitely something you need to consider, right? If you're publishing uh, you know, a, a large contract with lots of codes, lots of code, and um, the ability to store lots of variables, it can get quite expensive. Or if you have a deadline to get your contract out and then the network gets really busy, uh, you 
going to need to consider that as well. Um, and then a bit about security. So I already talked about this one and um, you can do some math, figure out how long it would take your computer. You might have a really fast i7-9700 or something, uh, gaming or video editing PC, uh, compare it to maybe how fast your film processor could run the same thing. OK, so that is Remix and MetaMask and Wallets. Um, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you not next week. I'll see you in two weeks.